All right, good evening, everybody. This is Robert Burns. I'm with the Space Coast Rocket, and I'm here this evening with um, Holly Edwards, the spouse of uh, Ar Army combat veteran Gregory Edwards, um, who's been in the news recently uh, from the current events happening across our nation. And we've been discussing the incident that led to her husband's death in the Brevard County Jail. Holly, what brought everybody here tonight? Can you tell us what happened tonight? Yes, um, the Sheriff's Department came to my house, called my cell phone, and called to do a wellness check on me because they were concerned, saying that they seen a post that I posted in a private Facebook group saying that I was gonna that made them concerned that I might be suicidal. Um, I spoke to an officer over the phone. I told him I'm fine. Like, I don't know what he's talking about. This is a post that ha I posted two days ago. Where was this post at? On a group called, me, a group called Formation 22. It's a private group for veterans, for, with PTSD, veterans, it's, it's to prevent veterans from committing suicide. It's supposed to be a private group for veterans to talk amongst themselves. And so you, like your husband, are a combat veteran, right? Correct. Right. And so that is an outlet that you have to vent and discuss the issues that you're dealing, dealing with. Right. Correct. So you said that an officer called you on your phone Yes, on my cell phone, um, stating concern for my wellness. I told him everything was fine. I have my friend at my house and my sister, and my sister spoke to the officer. She said that I was perfectly fine, and they still stayed at my house and said that Sheriff Ivy wanted to talk to me. I requested that that was not, I told the officer that, why can't we have a meeting? Like, that's, this is not appropriate to be huh. coming to my house on a Sunday. How many officers were here? It was overwhelming, so I cannot give you the number because I was very uncomfortable. It was six police cars. Six police cars? In front of my house. And they weren't even directly in front of my house. They were parked like they were flanking me. Out of your field of vision? Out of my field of vision. Why do you think that was? To sneak up on me. <laughs> like, um, so that I wouldn't know they were coming, so that I wouldn't know how many police officers were out there. I couldn't see the cars looking from the front of my house because they were hidden. And no one called you prior to them getting here? No, they called me, they were already here in front of my house. Mm -hmm. I didn't even realize this because we were getting my children ready for bed and I was having a conversation with my friend. So you came outside and spoke to who? I don't know the officers. I came outside. There was two officers outside. Um, but when I came outside, Sheriff Ivy was just immediately came up, hugged me and said that he wanted to work with me to make things better. Um, I told him that I mean, not only do I want justice for Greg, but I explained to him how important it is for veterans, especially combat veterans in Brevard County to get the help that we need and to have better facilities here locally so we don't have to drive so far away to get treatment. Um, and he seemed like he was interested, but I still feel like him coming to, like we could have had a meeting about this. Like we could have scheduled a, week, a meeting. Like I'm a single mom, I'm a combat veteran. When somebody comes to my house and I don't see a vehicle in the front door, I look at that as a threat. Like that doesn't um, sit well with me. I, I feel like I was very terrified, but <laughs> like, it, you know, it didn't sit well with me. Was he already here or did you have to wait for him to arrive? I was in the house and I was waiting for, I don't, he wasn't already here. 
but I wasn't aware that he, he wasn't already here. The officer asked me if I would like him to come to the house, and I said no. And he came anyway. And he came anyway. And did you ask him to hug you? No. Did you feel like that was appropriate? I was in shock. Just the whole situation, I, I just shut down because like, I, like I didn't know what to do. I wasn't expecting six police cars. The whole thing was like a blur. I was my, I was scared. Um, why, but like I was terrified. So why were you, Why were you scared? Because the last time that I had to deal with police, my husband never came home. Like. <laughs> And he had a PTSD episode, so I didn't want to get, I didn't want to have an episode. So I had to make sure I was calm. It was just, I was kind of like shut down from that, like from just having, before he even showed up, I was already in a state of mind of just shock. So the whole situation just happened too fast. It was uncomfortable. It was just not a, like, I don't think that things should go that way where you go to somebody's house and, and it's dark on a Sunday. Uh, like, Sundays are usually days for family and friends, like, off days, like. Has, had you ever spoken with Sheriff Ivy no, before this, then? No, this was the first time I ever met, met him, spoken to him, seen, like. So since, since the incident in 2018, this is, the first time, this is the first conversation you've had with him? Yes, and the first thing he does is hug me I mean, it's like, I was just, the whole thing was like, I was just in shock. And what did he say to you? <laughs> I was in shock. Yeah. I was in shock. Like, I was just. Did he invite you to, to he, his office? Oh, he did invite me um, to talk about, you know, the things that I want to talk to him about, like, just to see if he could help me with the veteran community. Um, but he also, and he also invited me to go to his office so that I can finally see the video footage, but, you know, I just, like, my lawyer wasn't present, I'm just in shock, the whole thing, it was a lot, like. Did they ask you if you wanted your lawyer present? Um. No, but when I told him that I wanted my lawyer present, he he agreed yeah. that I should. So he invited you to come watch the video. Did he give any guidelines for that on who you could bring with you or? Yes, he said I could bring one person with me. Is that something that you want to do? I mean, I just, of course I want to see the video. And I have said that, I have asked in my press, just even if I could see it privately. Um, I just, I'm so startled about what happened today that, right. like I'm shaking, like I'm shook, like like six police officers for one woman like me, like me, I'm a single mom, like I don't need six police officers, even if I was suicidal, like that was terrifying. And if I was having a PTSD episode, that would have been like the, It's okay. I don't think any combat vet would have like, like, I don't know how, I mean, it was just, I'm thanking God that like, you know, I do what I need to do as a veteran and I, I was able to hold it together and act professionally and respectably. And, um, I'm just glad they're gone. They were at my house for a long time. You know what I mean? I just want to be a mom and just enjoy my life. And like, <clears throat> be safe and my kids be safe. <laughs> like, like, I don't even want, like, they just, I, I feel sh very uncomfortable, like, like, what just happened? Why did it happen? How come there was no, like, if you wanted to talk to me, schedule a meeting, you'll come to my house with a bunch of cops, like, <laughs> like a bunch of cops for one person? <laughs> a 
female and a bunch of men cops. And not only do I have combat tra trauma, I have military sexual trauma. It was a bunch of male cops. Like, I don't, I don't, un I mean, I, it's almost like no one cares about people. Like, no one cares. Like, no one's taking consideration um, the mental health aspect of things that I've been fighting for and that I've been talking about even before, even when my husband was alive. People are still are not, like, getting it. They don't understand it. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. So there were a lot of people here tonight that came to support you. How did, do you know how that happened? I called, I actually contacted, um, wait, oh, I, Alton? Or? Yes, I contacted Alton, um, because I tried to contact my lawyer, I didn't know what to do, and I knew he was a lawyer, so I contacted him to see if this was appropriate, if it was okay, what should I do, um, He, had, he told me to stay in the house, but because I wanted them to leave, I just felt like, let me just go out, let them see that I'm okay, so that they would leave, but they, they were here for a while anyway. But they didn't leave. No. Um, and then when I called Alton, he had um, contacted some local veterans, um, veterans I never even met before and they were they came here right away do you feel safe do you feel safe in your own house no I'm sorry when I got here tonight I think it was around nine o'clock and they had been here since Seven ish. Seven something. Right. And they were just parked outside. They weren't calling you on the phone anymore. They weren't knocking on your door. They were just sitting there. And just standing in front of my house. Right. Okay. What? Can you tell me about your husband a little bit? Uh, Greg was a combat medic. He was in the 1st Cavalry. Those are usually the guys that go out in the field first. Um, he was in the army, uh, he was, um, devoted to other veterans. Uh, he volunteered for, with a lot of veteran organizations. Um, oh, he just, he was a good person. He wanted, he always wanted to help people, especially his battle buddies. What brought you guys here? <laughs> because we thought it was a safe place. <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. It's okay. It's all right. It's You're, it's all right. It's okay. I just can't really. I mean, that's the whole reason I moved out here. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
There's a lot of people that don't know the story about your husband. As, much, as hard as that is to believe, but there's a lot of people when I'm talking about it, you know, daily there, like, who is that? What happened? What, what, what happened that day at Walmart? Something triggered him in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. He reacted like he was in terror, like he was a combat. And he jumped in the back of a Toys for Tot truck, shivering, like scared. Mm -hmm. And he crawled up, like, <laughs> in the midst of a flashback. I'm just so frustrated. I'm just, it's like no one knows what flashbacks are. No one that, like, no one. I'm tired of explaining it. You yeah. know what I mean? I'm tired yeah. of explaining what veterans go through over and over again. Like. <laughs> So he was having a flashback, he got into an altercation. Yes, and um, then he was calm. Mm -hmm. And then the police came, and I told, told all the police the same thing. My husband's a combat medic, he has PTSD, he's having an episode. I told them the same thing repetitively, all the officers there. <laughs> and um, next thing you know, he gets arrested. And I get a call like hours later saying that there's been an accident and he's in the ICU. Instead of at a fucking VA hospital. <laughs> like. <laughs> and since then, they did an investigation and the sheriff's office did their own investigation and found that they were not at fault for anything. Is that what you understand? Yes, correct. And then you asked for... The release of the video. Mm -hmm. I mean, and his organs back because the case was closed. And my husband had strong beliefs in being buried with all his organs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I mean, well, you know, all, right. he wasn't an organ donor. Right. And he was strong, like, about not being an organ donor. And what reason have they given you for not releasing his remains to you? I didn't, I mean, I, I should have asked Sheriff Ivy when he came. I was in shock, so I don't, right. but we didn't even mention that. So yeah. he didn't discuss, like, where he's at with that. So he's invited the FDLE to do partial investigation right they're going to review his investigation but you asked for an independent full investigation full investigation and that's what you still want yeah okay do you think that that's going to happen um i have no words like we'll see i mean I'm, he invited me to meet with him I've been trying for over a year now. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just, right now, I'm just baffled that this, I'm still, like, this just happened. All these cops just came. Like, I'm in shock. Like, I don't know how, I'm in shock. I don't, I don't even know, I can't even, I hope so. I hope that it, Sheriff Ivy will do that for me, but. Well, how do you feel about the support that you got tonight? Were you expecting that? No, I was not. How I mean, I, well, I didn't know. I wasn't expecting it, but it felt good to have others, like, that I see that there's other veterans in this community to have my back. Of course we do. <laughs> so, so it made me feel like, you know, I have battle buddies here. I have people who understand, like, there's other people here that deal with PTSD, that, like, this is a problem. <laughs> this is, <laughs> I, I don't, I'm just thankful that they came. I'm thankful that there were people here, because... As a, as a combat veteran and somebody who struggles with PTSD, what, what would you 
What message would you give to law enforcement officers that respond to these types of incidents in the oh, future? I would never startle a veteran. Like, I would never be hiding vehicles. You shouldn't be that, like, you shouldn't be hiding your car. You should be pulling up with your vehicle. You should be like, I should know that you're here. The, the fact that, I mean, that seems sneaky to me. That's terrifying. And then to find out there's like six police cars outside, like, you should, I just thought it was common sense. Like, why would someone do that to a combat veteran? Like, real, like six, like, and I'm a female, and they were all men. Like, I didn't see a female. Like, it was a nightmare. It was, it was overwhelming and shocking. And I just, I can't even express how I'm feeling right now. I, I can't. <laughs> so the the community has come together, and they've been protesting. I think on a daily basis on behalf of you and your husband. How do you feel about those protests? I'm proud that like people are starting to care about veterans. I'm proud, because this is not just about Greg. This is not like, this is about a combat veteran with PTSD. There's a lot of combat veterans that are still alive with PTSD. Like, it's not our fault that we have PTSD. It's not our fault that we've experienced situations at war that we can't forget. Like. I, I'm just happy that like is bringing more awareness to the community that people are, are starting to um, come out and support Greg's cause but it's not just about Greg this is about combat veterans like this is like there's no awareness the fact that the police came to my house with all those police like it shows that no one gets it like no one understands mental health there's other and then there's other people with mental health besides combat veterans but as far as my experience, I can only speak on what my issues are. To do something like that, when a person's been in a war zone and you and you just like, there's cops everywhere and like, that's a trigger. That's like authoritative figures everywhere. People are in their, their uniforms with their guns. Like- and there's helicopters. Well, and right. there's helicopters around my house. You're absolutely right that like, like, I thought I was in a Rambo movie. Like, I thought I was in a Ra Like, you know what I mean? Like, thank God that I do, you know, take care of my mental health. Thank God that I do reach out to people because, like, that could have been a scary situation. I could have been killed. Like, I could have reacted in a way that was, like, I could have been on combat mode because I felt like I was in danger, like, and I tried to tell the officer on the phone, like, hey, you know, I'm a, I'm a combat vet, like, it was just unnecessary, it was terrifying. Well, I know we just met tonight, <clears throat> I'm a combat medic too, you know, I was a combat medic in the army before I retired, and I have PTSD, and I've been to Iraq, and I want you to know, you aren't alone, I think you saw that tonight, and this community is full of veterans, all over the place and we showed up tonight and we're going to keep showing up for you i promise you that you're not here by yourself and we are going to continue to fight for justice for greg and make sure that this kind of thing does not happen to any more veterans in this community or anybody else okay so I, that's from me and that's from everybody else that you saw here tonight all right we love you all right is there anything else you want to say I'm worn out. Like, I'm tapped out. Like, this is crazy. I appreciate you doing <laughs> this. I think it's important that people understand what happened tonight before things get twisted around tomorrow for political reasons or whatever. But, you know, this just happened. I think it's important for everybody in the community to understand what happens here. So I really want to appreciate, tell you I appreciate you having the courage to do this. I and felt like a criminal. I understand. I understand. <laughs> I was, I'm embarrassed. Like, there's all these cops in my neighborhood in front of my house. It's embarrassing. Like, I'm not a criminal. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? I fought for my country. <laughs> to just, it, it's very overwhelming yeah. and unnecessary, I yeah. feel like. You deserve better. We deserve better. All right, I'm going to end it here. Okay.